buddy. P.T. Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And today, I'm going to be reviewing a video that was sent to me by my friend Laura in Houston. Beetle Stitch, Laura. Hey, Laura. And this is a video from Bloomberg, Bloom, Bloomberg Originals titled, Why Call Center Jobs Will Disappear. And I wanted to go over this because it's an in-depth analysis as to why bots are going to eventually take over all the human positions in call centers. And I shall not, I shall not delay. Let's get right into it, my sweet friends. So I'm kind of I'm going to kind of jump around here because it's it is an eight minute and forty seven second video. Around the world, businesses field hundreds of billions of requests from us each year. We want our flights changed, a purchase refunded, a claim reviewed. That takes the labor of millions of agents who tend to our every need. Look at that. That's what a real call center looks like, okay? So if you're in interviewing for a call center position and you're 18, 22 years old, you're young, you're wet behind the ears, you're naive, which we all are at that age, and you think it's going to be a fun, glorious job, you're packed into these tiny cubicles like sardines and treated like cattle. But soon, automation will take over much of that. And it starts with the painstaking work of this 23-year-old. Now, I'm sorry, but she looks really familiar. And I don't know if I have already reviewed this video. It doesn't look familiar to me, but she does. So I don't know if I've seen her in another video, which makes me curious if they use actors in all these videos. My name is Laura Morales, and I'm a chatbot designer. So let, let's go, we'll see what Lolita Morales does. A chatbot designer. Because she sits on the beach. Okay, yeah, let's get to a people. You Dominican Republic for its beaches. But further west, in the country's capital of Santo Domingo, there's a bustling hub of call centers for American businesses. Look at that. That's a real call center. I'm sorry to interrupt, but th these are the kind of people. I mean, not that these people are unattractive, but they're usually middle, middle-aged, overweight people. Um, in, the, in the call centers here in Ohio, there's a lot of African-American people in Northeast Ohio. So there's lots and lots of African-American people to fill, fill the positions in the call centers. So this, this looks like a Northeast Ohio call center. The only exception is there's windows. There's natural light coming in. Laura works for one of them at a company called Outplex. After you. Some of Outplex's inquiries are handled by traditional call center agents over the phone. Others are handled by contact center agents over live written chat. Last year, the company introduced a third kind of agent, a bot. Laura oversees bots for three US-based clients. And these bots greet customers looking for assistance online. The bots resolve simple queries on their own. And the more complicated questions get escalated to a human representative. So the bots are basically little computer programs that can read either the language through text or voice and they scan a database and go, I can answer that question or I can't. If they can't or it's too complex or they can't understand what the person's saying that sends it off to a human person. I think she's going to explain that right now. Me as an agent, I used to take three conversations or just one call at the time. With bots, you don't have that limitation. Alexa, will I need an umbrella tomorrow? It might rain tomorrow. There's a 54% chance. Bots today are everywhere. 
and so the people who design their speech are in high demand. The job is kind of like writing a very dry screenplay with a choose-your-own-adventure element for the many ways customers will respond. The hard part comes once the bot goes live. Can you go to the metrics of all that? Often, its pre-scripted conversations don't work out the way Laura and her team hoped they would. <laughs> so they're constantly tinkering. The way to start a day with the bots, I need to check how the bots did on the previous day. So I go into analytics, and my favorite one is this. It's the unmatched phrases. These are the moments when the bot didn't know what the customer wanted. Exactly. So she's, instead of managing call center reps, apparently she's managing bots and people that tinker with the bots or shape them or reprogram them. And I can also see how many clients or visitors clicked on the first button or the second button on the main menu. So if my visitors are not interacting with my menus, that means that maybe something is not right. So it's interesting because you used to be coaching the human agents mm -hmm. and now you're coaching a robot. Is that easier or harder? It's easier. You don't have to worry about hurting a bot's feelings. You're not emotional about it. You're just doing what you need to do for getting the results you want. So they're taking the human aspect of the call center out of the picture completely. So people like this don't have to be bothered with the human element of it, with emotions, with showing up late, with calling in sick, with getting pregnant. She mentions the pregnant part here. Let's go skip over this bullshit. What is this? Cuatro años. Yo a escuchar lo que era loco el. Te ingresé y Dominica. Gracias. Ello. Agent when she was 17 and work. Laura started out as an entry level agent when she was 17 and worked her way up. Last year, she was chosen to manage her company's first interactive chatbot, and today makes about $8 an hour, which is four times what she earned when she first became an agent. Well, she's making $2 an hour when she was an agent at the age of, uh, what was it, 14, 17, something like that. The transition to work on chatbots took about three months to learn various aspects of the job, including training on special software that doesn't require her to code. Laura immediately saw the benefits. A bot is never late. A bot doesn't get sick or pregnant. Those are specific human situations that you can't fight, automation it's able to take that out. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's just crazy. And I understand, and I'm very into the technology world, and but I can see how it's going to take jobs away. I mean, I understand that they don't want to deal with the human element in any corporation. But if they eliminate all of our jobs, what are we going to do to make money? You know, I, I hate to be conspiratorial, but it apparently... Maybe it is coming to, you'll own nothing and you'll like it. Maybe they'll provide us with digital currency and, I don't know, digital food. Or, or we'll all receive a ration of food on a monthly basis. That the world will become like socialized, socialized medicine, socialized work. We won't have to work. Maybe they'll just give us enough to be sustained, to be alive. But what's the point? It's the strangest thing. I, mean, I can understand it's going to save the company's money. It's going to save the company's personnel problems with pregnancy and lateness and tardiness and absenteeism and attitude problems and things like that. But what's the ultimate goal? You know, if the ultimate goal is to take the jobs away from humans so they can make more money, then what are we all? What are the billions of us on the planet going to do? I don't know. Maybe that's why we're about to enter into World War III to eliminate several billion of us so they don't have to deal with us anymore.
because there's a lots there's lots of us, including myself, that can't find work. Which I've talked about in other videos. But her mom had some hesitations. Lo vi super interesante. La verdad, también pensé va a desplazar a los representantes. Y sí sentí temor. Look at that. I have worked in call centers like this. I mean, they're just, isn't it depressing? It's just a depressing atmosphere. These rows of dark black plastic chairs and gray little tiny cubicles, and you're just sitting there. Ugh. For now, the introduction of the bots hasn't led to any layoffs. Because they've helped Outplex win more business, the company has actually hired more human agents. This is what I say to that. To handle the inquiries that get escalated from the bots. <coughs> Let's skip around here. How this is all going to play out. I'm having drinks. Men, call center agents than we do now. Automation is our reality. And the skills. See, what is she saying? Fewer human call center agents than we do now. Automation is our reality. And the skill set that you will need to work in this industry, it's going to be different from the regular agents you have today. I do believe it will get more technical. It will not be dealing with the customer anymore. It will be monitoring the software. And if you don't adapt, you will need to do something else. What a bitch. No. What what a freaking bitch. She's part of this. She's part of the She Carl. Step over for the bots, please. What a bitch, man. She's such a like a condescending hard C. And if you don't adapt, you will need to do something else. A small part of you that feels guilty for automating away the job that gave you your start in your career and is the job of a lot of your colleagues right now. Not at all. <laughs> Zero guilt. Zero guilt? Yeah. Yeah. Zero hesitation. It's, it's happening already. You know, I just, I can't stand it. I mean, there's only a couple seconds left in this video. Another minute. And, you know, this is where we're headed, folks. As I said in the previous video, if a corporation, if you watch the corporation and watch how they treat the least of us, it speaks volumes about how they treat the rest of the people. The corporations are founded and funded and... The vision of the corporation is from predominantly white men who are older than me, who are worth billions and billions of dollars, okay? And somewhere in their past, any of these men got an idea for a product of some type of food or electronic device or a car or an airplane, and they have millions and millions of customers now, okay? And the idea was these people were maniacal, um, self-centered, egotistical, sociopathic, psychopaths. They just wanted one thing, to make some money. And think of all the products that you and I buy on a weekly, daily, monthly, yearly basis that we really don't need. Like a titanium iPhone. They've been pushing this titanium iPhone down our throats on TV, radio, and the Internet. As if titanium is the reason why they've marketed it to make you think... You need this phone because it's made of titanium. What difference does it make? It could be made of a cow pie. What difference does it make? As long as it's a functioning iPhone that keeps the decent charge and carries a good signal. I mean, they push this crap down your throat and they're making billions of dollars off of you and me. And they treat their employees. They're, they're trying to figure out how to get by with the fewest amount of employees so they can make as much money as they can so they can have more yachts, more mansions, more leather mistresses. And I'm not just being facetious. These men that run these companies, probably the women too, but the men, men are driven by power. Men are driven by their sexual desires and their urges. Men are driven by their narcissism. Okay? 
So they think, how can I use these people, pay them the least amount of money, uh, invest the least amount in, in, in a pension plan or 401ks? How can I invest the least amount in their health care so I can make the most money and make it seem like we're doing them a favor? That's what it's all about. <clears throat> so what they've come up with now, they've bought into the science of bots. The bots are marching into these corporations and they're taking over our jobs. No, I didn't like working in the call centers. I didn't like it at all. It was, it was hell. It was horrible. But the, the problem is, is that where are the jobs going to go? I mean, this is what I think. I, I don't know if it, the world is headed to slavery, complete slavery, regardless of the color of our skin or race or nationality or religion. But where's every, where are they going to put everybody? You know, fast food is automated. Here in my town, you, you go to McDonald's, there's hardly any kids that work in there anymore. It's all automated. You walk up to a screen, you make your order on the screen, it goes back to somebody at the back. For now, they're making the burgers. You go up to the counter and say, hey, I'm number 66. Uh, you know, the cheeseburger and fries, and they give you your cheeseburger and fries, and you walk out. Pretty soon, that'll all be automated. You may as well just be walking up to a vending machine. You know, and, and ordering your food like they have some vending machines that serve hot food. I mean, I, I just don't know anymore. And there's, there's no checks and balances worldwide. There's no checks and balances. I mean, this young lady thinks she's got it made. She has no regret. She has no remorse. She thinks she's all that in a bag of chips because now she's in this, you know, the driver's seat of this position. But pretty soon they'll take her, they'll take, her, her spot will be taken. And there's another video I'm going to show later on about the godfather of artificial intelligence, how he says it's really eventually going to replace almost everything, replace all humans, and to replace all the jobs, it'll replace all the things that we do to get to make money. But that's a whole other time. But, you know, this is it. This is what the world is coming to. And, you know, as much as I hate call center jobs, at least I, I knew I could always get a call center job. There was always a chance of finding a job in a call center if I needed to. So, so there you have it. That's why call center jobs will disappear. I'm PT Pop, call center survivor. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.